low KC family. Sitting here thinking about January 2020. And January 2020 uh, was off to a bad start for me. Um, one of my best friends that attended Knoxville College with me, Devin Collins, better known as Devo, uh, passed and we had his funeral on January 13th in Birmingham, Alabama. There were plenty KCNs there to send our brother off well. And so that was the start of a 2020 that would be unforgiving. After the funeral, myself and my other fraternity brothers, Kevin Lane and Keith Bowman, who all shared the same room with me at the funeral, we all returned back to our different cities of Detroit, Michigan, Atlanta, Georgia, and Knoxville, Tennessee. And we all had symptoms of a cold or a flu. Uh, and this was a few days after the funeral. Uh, it started with uh, Keith Bowman in Detroit saying that uh, he wasn't feeling well and he needed to go to the hospital. And he informed myself and Kevin that he had an upper respiratory infection and bronchitis. A few days after that, um, I had symptoms that I could no longer uh, medicate at home. So I went to the doctor and I was diagnosed also with an upper respiratory uh, infection and received medication. And yes, the third gentleman that was in the room, Kevin Lane, um, a few days after me, ended up going to the hospital as well with the same diagnosis. This was all within a couple weeks uh, after the funeral. So in February, we all uh, recovered from our infections. And next thing you know, March 2020, COVID hits. So I just wanted to take this time um, a year later to remember those that were lost, those KCNs that were lost, and those KCNs that were impacted um, by COVID in their immediate families or extended families. And we just wanted to remember those um, as we move forward and operate in this new normal. KC Wakanda forever. So in remembering those, I've asked Mike Rogers, our Director of Alumni Affairs, to put together something nice and sweet to remember those. We have a spoken word from Jonathan from Carpetbag Theater, which has had a presence at the Knoxville College Performing Arts Building at times. We also have our wonderful choir uh, with two musical selections that you will hear. And we'll also hear from our Chief Operating Officer and Executive Vice, Vice President Dr. Daisha Lundy to take us home.
Good evening. My name is Jonathan Clark, and I am the Executive and Artistic Director at the Carpetbag Theater Incorporated. I'm here reading a piece from a work in progress from the Carpetbag Theater Ensemble entitled COVID Stories, When the Hugs Went Away. This piece is called COVID-19, If You're Black. What does it mean? We ask, with tears in our eyes, still fresh from mourning the loss of loved ones. Ancestors, they became too soon. This could have been prevented. Here are some statistics. Two times more likely to die from COVID if you're black. Two times more likely to be uninsured whether you're employed or not if you're black. Three times more likely to be hospitalized from COVID if you're black. 40% more likely to receive care of a worse quality at a medical facility if you're black. Twice as likely to be affected by a pre-existing condition that increased your vulnerability to COVID if you're black. More than twice as likely to live in housing structures that decrease your ability to distance yourself socially, increasing your likelihood of contracting COVID daily if you're black. From GED to PhD, you're two times as likely to be unemployed if you're black, no matter your level of education. If you are employed and still going to work, the phrase work from home is something that is twice as likely not to ever have applied to you if you're black. Eight times less likely to own a business, but three times as likely to have that business shut down during the pandemic if you're black. A lack of pre-existing relationships with business lenders at big banks is a reality if you're black. So Amazon, Walmart, McDonald's got your paycheck protection money before you could because you're black. This pandemic has been hell on earth but had more than twice the impact if you so happen to be black. Do you see what we're getting at? We've cried twice as many tears over the course of this year because racism is built into this system that we built for you. We're all in this together, never applied to us. Liberty and justice for all, never applied to us. Hands up, don't shoot, never applied to us. Knock, knock, it's the police, never applied to us. Put on your mask before you enter the bank, grocery store, any other place of business, never applied to us. But now we don't have a choice. You couldn't imagine the level of confusion, hesitation before entering this place if you're black. We don't have a choice. The same way George doesn't have a voice, the same way Ahmad won't ever make it to his destination, the same way Brianna still hasn't woken up, the same way Elijah's ski mask would have look, wouldn't have looked so sketchy after all, just 200 days after his murder. This could have been prevented. If only racism would have taken its mask off a long time ago, we could have seen it coming, kept socially distanced from it. Instead, while it's been concealed, carried, and dog whistled, We've had to sit next to it, apply for a job with it, serve food to it, sing hymnals with it, be governed by it, have our children miseducated by teachers who are drenched in it, navigate a system where the infrastructure is entrenched in it. We hold to these truths and beg them to present some sort of semblance of evidence, but we won't hold our breath, but we will hold our heads high as we honor the memories and sing the praises and speak the names of those who passed on before us with power, knowing that our survival, our survival shall not be in vain. Thank you.
Hello, Knoxville College family and friends. Thank you so much for tuning in today. My name is Dr. Daisha Lundy, and I'm the Executive Vice President and COO of Knoxville College. It was so important for us to honor the lives of those who are no longer with us due to the devastating disease of COVID-19. This year has exposed so many inequities as it relates to access to health care in our black and brown communities. Although the last year has been filled with so many trials, something amazing has been happening in our communities. The glimpse of hope and light are appearing in the midst of the chaos. We must always remember to seek God's face, pray, move our hearts toward love while showing empathy to our neighbors. Our fight is not over as we continue to beat this awful disease. But as we stand united in faith, we will win this battle. Thank you again for tuning in. My thoughts and prayers are with you. Let us continue to walk in unity and in love as we continue to rebuild our communities. Thank you so much for tuning in. We love you, we are praying for you, and remember Wakanda forever.